Hi, I'm Ryan with Better Tattooing, and uh, today we're going to be talking about over. Well, it's like I've made like four videos, anyways, but like we're talking about oversaturation. <laughs> Let's go! All right, now that that's over with, oversaturation. Now, this is something that is becoming more and more and more and more and more evident in tattooing. And uh, I think it's because we haven't really learned some of the more fundamental things uh, about how to work with clients' skin because they, they haven't really been out there. Um, there's only a few people I know who, who understand some of this stuff. I mean, I haven't met everyone, of course, but um, when we start getting into the, the, the effects of trauma on the body and deposition of foreign particles and histological changes surrounding those areas. Like it's, it's really complex and there's not very many people, especially in the industry looking out who know about this stuff. So um, if you haven't learned some of these things that are on the channel, like don't feel bad. This is just what's happening now. I honestly think that there was people who were back in tattooing like the early time, the old boys, right? Long, long time, all the old schoolers. I think that they knew a lot of this, but trade secrets being the things that they were, I think they took them to the grave. So even if they didn't have the science to explain some of the more minutia uh, or the minute aspects of this stuff, like break it down to the minutia, I think that they knew like empathetically or tactilely exactly what was going on and they knew how to fix it. But alas, here we are. A lot of people are teaching themselves how to tattoo and they may not know what they're doing. <laughs> And when they do kind of get like a social following then they open a shop, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, that's that, that, I guess it's fine, you know, the freedom and choice and all that stuff. But remember the dilution of the industry is gonna come down to people who actually sacrifice for this rather than just kind of do whatever, right? So maybe we'll do that one next because I got to remember what I'm doing here. Let's go critiques. And I'll ramble on more about that. Anyways, let's get back to what is oversaturation. Um, oversaturation is a state in which you have packed so much pigment into that, that area of the skin that structurally it can't hold it, right? This is a 10 pounds of poo in a five pound bag situation, but the poo is now pigment. As the skin is being filled, we have a space that's being created by a needle and we're depositing pigment in and around where that trauma spot is. Now, oversaturation occurs for a few reasons, a few, yeah, a few ways that it occurs would be, you know, uh, if you're going really, really slow, the machine is running, what you're doing is creating a bunch of additional trauma, basically like hollowing out a Grand Canyon <laughs> and you're allowing that pigment to fill into that space and settle up. Now, when the body starts to heal, this massive wound that you've created by going too slow. <clears throat> what happens is the, all of the little fibers that make up our skin, cells and stuff start shooting every which way to try and fill it up. And all of this pigment will end up getting picked up, but because there is less area now, because all of these other cells have ended up starting to kind of fill in, whatever pigment has been placed, and I know a 2D model probably isn't the best there, it, it's gonna have to be pushed somewhere else. It's like an Oreo cookie effect, right? You take a cookie and you squish it. What happens? Well, it's gonna move out. And oversaturation, excuse me, sport drink burps. Um, Oversaturation literally is just going to be this, where we're going to see leaky lines and space inside the lines where um, maybe there might be an occlusion, some missing holidays, we say, and it naturally fills itself in over time, which sometimes can be a good thing. But if you run clean, air quote, clean single pass lines that are oversaturated, then what happens is it tends to age prematurely, right? So we've got premature age, premature aging. Okay, um, so this one's the, the too slow, uh, easy enough. All you got to do is just kind of pick up your hand speed. Um, if you are running a larger needle grouping, usually what's going to have to happen, especially like don't like hollow liners. 
I, I'm mixed about it, right? Because some people will, will say that it's the best thing in the world, but other people won't. I'd say if you're using hollow liners, there is a learning curve to it. And do not trust a lot of the things that you see on YouTube or social media about how to run a hollow liner, because normally you're going to be going too slow. And remember that those needlers are going to be configured in a space where there's nothing on the inside. So realistically, what you're doing is creating a whole bunch of single needle holes, right? And to get those, to actually like saturate well, you have to move really, really slow. Just like you would if you're trying to line in and solid fill with black tribal, we'll say a sleeve with a single needle. It's gonna take a lot of time unless you know what you're doing. So, uh, one twick, one twick, I don't fucking whatever. One trick with these, if you want to, just cause I like to give everything out. When you're lining, you have to give just a little bit of a rotation. Right, so if you're pulling your line, you're actually rotating the machine as you go. It'll end up causing these to turn as you're moving. And it'll actually give you a pretty neat effect. It's almost like um, doing calligraphy where you're bending and moving your fingers as you're doing like with a flat on the skin. Anyways, give it a shot, see what happens. It's kind of interesting. All right, so the two slow is one. And this usually is gonna, like the too slow is gonna be determined on, you have actual like good technique, right? You're stretching fine. Like you have good depth, everything is great, but you're seeing it age too quick, that's oversaturation. So next one on this, Whoop. we're going too fast, which yes, this can happen. We're gonna talk with like stipple, right? We get into this. We have a bunch of needle strikes that are going and the machine is running at a certain speed, but your hand is moving faster than it, what you're not gonna get is that straight line, right? What you're gonna get is a spot where the needle is coming into contact every time the machine actually cycles over. So when this happens, if your hand is moving way too fast from this, what you end up getting are these, these blowing holes where the skin is being stretched each time that it comes in, allowing additional pigment to be dumped into the skin as it collapses down right? Which leads to an oversaturation space of these dots, which will usually create a bunch of variability in them as they heal up. Now, this can be good and it can be a technique as long as you're not scarring someone, right? If you want to add texture to something that is going to be more evident three to five years down the road, doing one of these like too fast stipples with oversaturation, which you got to have a relatively decent size grouping for this one and that try to figure out what decent means. Um, <laughs> if you're doing this, it's kind of cool because you'll end up with these spaces where even if there is a little bit of scarring, you're gonna have variability inside of a fill. So that's like where a lot of people are doing these portraits now that are just whip shaded. And why like five years out, they look perfectly smooth is because they've actually oversaturated with a small grouping, every single one of those dots, and it causes them to bleed out and move as they age. Is this good technique? Maybe, I don't know, that depends on the person, but I do know that these lines and dots and everything else you're doing with oversaturation tend to age faster. And as they age faster, one of the things that happens is that pigment ends up getting pulled into the skin. Deeper and deeper until it's gone into the body and taken to the lymph nodes, right? So oversaturation can be a decent thing aesthetically, like at the three, five year mark, but 20 years out, there, there probably should be some questions asked about the safety of such stuff. Anyways. There's another one. And uh, let's do this. Too fast, too slow. And the last one, of course, is too deep. Mm -hmm. If we have our skin model up here again, do to do. Oversaturation can occur when that needle is going way too far down. I should just draw it right down the wall. Um, and what happens is you've just created a massive pocket of trauma that, that further extends where it normally would. Like when we start looking at the actual needle strikes where they come in, right, you end up with usually these V-shaped holes until you start burying the needle further, right? And then as that additional pressure causes the skin to cave, and it causes it as well once the needle punctures it to rip a little bit. Now, if you have a puncture wound in your hand and you keep pushing until you break past all of the fascia, what happens is it ends up splitting apart. So if you ruin the structural integrity, even in a microscopic manner of the skin in that area, you're opening it up, which allows a lot more pigment to fall in, whoop, which will lead to oversaturation. Now this is the worst one. A two, well, if we, if we actually blend too deep plus too slow, that's just a mess, right? 
uh, that's when you end up with massive scarring and it just, it looks like garbage. Um, anyways, this one's the worst in and of itself, by itself, um, because the body's ability to actually heal the, the wound that's there is, is gonna be compromised, right? You have a deeper level of tissue damage you have more than even like when it was too slow and shallow and like actually correct. There's so much more pigment there. You're gonna see this stuff age really quickly. So, and I mean, what I mean by quickly is like three months, it's gonna start looking like a year old. At six months out, it'll look like a five-year-old tattoo. This is probably the, the worst ones that I see and they're also the most difficult to do anything with, right? Because when you get into trying to repair something like this, most people will be like, let's just clean it up. And what do they do? They put more ink in it. <laughs> and if you can think about stuffing more ink into the skin that already has too much ink, what is it going to do? It's probably gonna cause it to age even faster. Um, as well as if you don't have good technique going in for that rework, you're ending up traumatizing the skin even more. Could you imagine if it's too deep the first time and somebody comes in too deep again? That's really bad. So, comes down to technique, right? That's oversaturation for you. To fix it, don't do that stuff. Uh, <laughs> and that's it for today. Uh, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.